I think this thing is on. Hey, Dr. Bradshuck, I am excited to be talking to you today about something called the psychological contract. The psychological contract. The psychological contract. The psychological contract is that the psychological contract. Psychological contract. Psychological contract. And hey, I want to uh, talk to everybody about something called the uh, psychological contract. Uh, sometimes with contracts, like we can see the contract, right? Like we know where it's at. We know where we need to sign. In fact. Uh, contracts are something that are, they're legally binding. So the important part of a contract is if you don't fulfill your obligation on your end or the other party doesn't fulfill their obligation, they're, they're in breach of that contract. You know, unlike hard contracts or like legally binding contracts, a psychological contract isn't something that we, that we write or we sign our name to, but it is something that's incredibly important when we're talking about the idea of change and innovation in organizations. So you can you can imagine that sometimes employees respond emotionally to changes or to innovations inside organizations. And we have to remember that as consultants, either external consultants or internal consultants, that there's a psychological contract at play between the employer and the employee. So there's no doubt that there are uh, there are steps to innovation and there are steps to change and there are frameworks and models that we can use to understand the innovation or the need for change that's going on around us. But the one thing that is likely to be the most helpful for you as a consultant is understanding the psychological contract. So even though sometimes the need for change or the need for innovation is something that's rational, like we can see the need for it, we've identified the who, we've identified the what, um, we, we know what we need to do. We understand um, the behavioral economics of it. Emotion is oftentimes at play. And so even when change is something that's incredibly rational, we've got to be able to understand the emotions. And the emotions, I'm telling you, will be caught up in the psychological contract between the employee and the employer and the current state of the market. One of the things that I think is really important about the psychological contract is that is uh, it's grounded in belief. The Both the implicit and the explicit agreements that we think we have. And here's one of the things that, that I know about the idea of belief. Belief drives our behavior. Belief absolutely drives our behavior. When we believe in something or believe in the context of something or we believe that a psychological contract is in place in the way in which we see it, we act accordingly. So let's use an analogy to understand what we mean by this idea of a psychological contract. So I took my daughter to Disney World a couple of years ago when she was much younger and we were standing in line at, uh, at, in Magic Kingdom to meet Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. And Disney World does a really good job about building out the characters and building out the scenery so that you believe that you are really in Arendelle. You believe that Queen Elsa is, is in that castle right there. And it was hot and it was steamy and it was sweaty. And I mean, she knew that we weren't really in Disney World, but she couldn't tell the difference because she believed in the moment that she was going to meet Queen Elsa and uh, Princess Anna. And I remember rounding the corner and we were, we stood outside in this hot sun for a very long time. And I remember waiting in this like long winding line and then finally going inside. And, and I remember the very first time that Maddie met a princess when she met Queen Elsa and she ran to Queen Elsa to meet her. She ran to, to Queen, uh, or Queen Elsa and Princess Anna to meet them because why? Because she believed that to be real. And when we believe those things to be real, then we act our behaviors accordingly. So let's play this out for a second. What would have happened if after my daughter ran to Queen Elsa, she threw off her costume and uh, pointed at my daughter and was like, hey kid, joke's on you. I'm not really Queen Elsa. I'm some lady who lives in Orlando, Florida, and I just play a princess. What would that have done to my daughter? Well, it probably would have been really confusing and kind of awkward in the moment for sure, but at the same time, the contract that she had between the expectation, the implicit and the explicit expectations that she had would have been absolutely shattered. And that's what happens in organizations sometimes when that psychological contract is breached. It's almost like somebody throws off their costume really quickly and is like, ha ha ha, I gotcha, or at least it can feel that way. Remember, change isn't rational. Change is oftentimes irrational. 
and emotions are not rational. They don't, they don't operate under the same laws of logic that we would if we were creating a to-do list. They, they operate in dynamic situations and in dynamic systems that help us understand the world around us and, quite frankly, keep us safe. When we believe that psychological contract is real and actionable and, uh, and it is, it's in place, we act accordingly. Our behaviors in the workplace act accordingly. And when that is breached, when there is a mishap of trust or unclear communications or the status quo changes such that we don't believe those implicit and explicit agreements are in place as they were before, we then resist. And sometimes that's what we see as resistance to innovation or resistance to change. So as a change agent, it becomes incredibly important. It becomes imperative for us to understand not only the psychological contract, but what's driving it. What are the implicit and ex explicit agreements that are in place between the employee and the employer? And what are the things that we need to know as an external consultant? I, I, I would encourage you to think about the psychological contract as um, this idea of fairness and balance between the employee and the employer and, and how that employee is not only treated by their employer, but what the employee puts into their job. So when we think about things like engagement or commitment, those things are grounded in this idea of a psychological contract. And as an as a consultant, things like compassion, trust, empathy, fairness, objectivity, those things are particularly important. Issues of distributive and procedural justice, they become very important and they they characterize, they characterize the left and right limits of the psychological contract in ways that materialize the relationship between the employee and the employer. So guys, that's the psychological contract. It's all about relationships. It's, it's gonna go back to people, people, people. And it's gonna go back to making sure that we manage those relationships and that we are developing the key skills that we need as consultants.